Welcome to Madame Ravens. This way to the library. She's been expecting you. I hope you enjoy this video, my darlings. It is entirely thanks to Dr. Creepin. He will read the first story windows, and he has supplied me with the story I was in in his Christmas special, in case you missed it. Big thanks to him for all his help in this. He's so awesome and such a gentleman. It's true, what they say. Monsters do exist. They have always existed and will continue to do so. They live in our minds, infesting them with suicidal and horrible thoughts. Some of us give in, some of us don't. It's the battle that never ends. But there are more strange and fearsome things. The things that lurk in the shadows and only come out when it's dark on our planet. They feast on us, on our fear, our guilt, and every bad emotion we have. This is a story about one of those things. Of those things that want to destroy our people. Kill us. Torture us. I stare at the TV screen. Just some classic bullshit about politics again. My mind wanders off to several different thoughts. My wife, my job, my family. I work for the local police station and, since there are rarely any crimes in this town, we mostly eat donuts, drink coffee and get fat. Although I wouldn't call myself that. I go to the gym every day and try to eat healthy. Although tonight, I have a bag of chips with me. A thought comes rushing into my mind. It was about a case we had last month. A man was washed ashore. He was dead, obviously, and covered in bite marks. And in some parts of his body, there was flesh ripped out. His eyes were gone as well. We thought sharks, but they don't usually just bite some dead prey and leave it. No, there was something quite off about this bizarre incident. We had to close the case since there were no suspects, and the man's body was too destroyed to identify him. I felt a breeze of cold air the moment I sat up from the couch. The kitchen window was open. I got up to close it, and as I did, I saw a figure standing outside looking at our window. I was a bit creeped out, I'm not going to lie. I hesitantly closed the window and then shut the blinds, thinking about how creepy this actually was. I yawned and opened the bedroom. My wife was long asleep, so I kissed her on the cheek, dressed down to my underwear and silently got into bed and pulled the covers over my body. I was awoken at about 3 a.m. from knocking on the door. We lived in an apartment on the fourth floor, so it wasn't likely that any homeless person could have gotten in. Yet I got up, put on a pair of shorts, since it was summer outside, and went to look. I heard the knock again, and this time it was more violent. I said, Hello? and immediately regretted saying it. From the other side of the door, I heard an old man's voice. Go. Run. They'll get you. Run. Run. They will eat you. And then, there was silence. I listened for breathing, but there was none. In fact, it was way too quiet, more than it should be. We lived under a bar, and people go there every night. I was really creeped out when I, once again, felt cold air rush up my back. I looked behind me and saw the window in the kitchen open again. What? 
I would closed it when I went to sleep. I walked slowly to the kitchen and to the window. I saw the same figure still standing there. I shut the window fast, locking it with a lock that we had over each window. I shut the blinds, took my gun from the safe and put it on my nightstand, just, just in case. I went back to bed, but it's needless for me to say that I didn't close my eyes once again that night. The next morning, once I woke up, my wife was cooking breakfast already. I entered the kitchen, still tired from the sleepless night, said good morning to her and asked if she had opened the window at night. She denied doing it, so I was left thinking about this all day long. I won't bother telling you about my work day, because it was boring as hell. Nothing ever happened in this small town. I got home before my wife, because she works at the mall and she comes home at eight. I had about three hours for myself, so I decided to check out the window once again. I opened the blinds and let the sun shine in. The dark figure was obviously gone. Nothing seemed off or out of the ordinary. The window wasn't broken or anything, and I had no explanation as to how it had opened, if none of us had done it. We don't have strong winds here, not ones that will blow open a shut window, definitely not. I was confused. Things like this just don't happen. I don't believe in ghosts or anything like that. I decided to throw some bad thoughts out of my head and go out to smoke a cigarette and wait for my wife to come home since she only works a few hundred meters away from here and she's on foot. Once she gets home, we order pizza for dinner, watch a movie and uh, do adult stuff, talk, laugh, drink a bit. We go to sleep at around 1 a.m. and I check the window before we do so. It's shut. No figure standing outside this night. I go to the back door and check the lock on the door as well. Locked and no sound outside. I go back to the bathroom, turn out the lights and jump into bed. I feel cold. I wake up. My watch is unplugged. I turn around and see the bed beside me empty cold sweat is rushing down my spine. My wife is gone. I bolt upright in bed. I feel the cold again. I grab my gun and walk out of the bedroom. What I see is terrifying. Every window is open. Wide open. The cool air is blowing in. I proceed to close every window and, as I do, I call for my wife. No answer. I check the bathroom and every other room. Nothing. Finally, the kitchen. The window is the last one open there. I walk inside the dark kitchen, pointing my gun at the window. It's an intruder. I proceed to tell myself, but something inside me knows this is something worse. I don't dare to turn on the lights in the kitchen. I'm scared that I might see something I will... Well, I don't know. I slowly approach the window. Then I see it. It's my wife. Well, her face to be exact. A minute later, it's gone. I want to call out to her, but I can't. My mouth is dry. My hand with the gun is now shaking. I'm at the window and I see it. The figure. It's sitting on the tree. It's not a man. It has six eyes and way too many arms. It sits there, smiling with its huge mouth. I don't know what to do. 
One's mind can only process what it understands. Then, suddenly, the creature lunges at me, trying to grab me with its long and nail-covered fingers. I fire a shot at it. The bullet just bounces off, so I try pushing it away from myself. It tries to eat my face, but I use all of my strength I have in me to push its jaws away from me. Then, an idea sparks into my mind. I'm going to burn myself and this fucker with it. Our flat is a gasoline tank. It's not much, but it might be enough to light this apartment on fire. I know, this sounds crazy. But I think it's the only chance I've got. With all of my strength, I push this thing off me and throw a kitchen knife at it. It screams a terrifying scream and growls in pain. This gives me the split second to close the window and rush out of the room and shut the door behind me. I feel pain in my wrist. Blood is soaking in my shorts as well. I take the gasoline container from the washing room and open it, splashing the gasoline all over the floor. What surprises me is that I hear no sound from the kitchen whatsoever. I empty half of it and proceed to walk back to the kitchen. I wait for a moment, then brace myself for the worst and walk inside. My wife is standing in front of me. She wraps her arms around me and starts whispering to me, and I almost believe that it's her. But there is one thing. Since when does my wife have red eyes? I scream and punch her away. Immediately her skin starts peeling off, revealing the creature. I smile and splash the remaining gasoline around me and on the creature as well. It stares at me for a moment. I look into its eyes of hell. Then I pull out my lighter, and just as the thing jumps on top of me, I drop it on the ground. I feel sharp pain, and then I'm falling into the black abyss. Local newspaper report. Four killed in apartment fire. The fire supposedly started from the fourth floor and lit up the whole building. It took two days for the firemen to completely extinguish the fire, which could have been caused by a gasoline explosion. The bodies of four persons were found. All were men. The most destroyed body had bizarre marks on it. Parts of the man's body were bitten out, and his eyes were gone. Skin and Bones by Nerd Neil. I don't like her. She's weird, complains Travis, arms crossed and pacing back and forth. Look, bud, answers Trevor, anxiously watching out of the living room window. I have to go to this meeting. Or I could lose my job. Kim and I have been dating for a long time now. I really like her and wouldn't trust anyone else to watch you while I'm gone. It's just for tonight, and this will give you a chance to really get to know her. Who knows? By the time I get back to you, you two might be best friends. Doubt it, Travis replied. Trevor sighs and turns to his son. Travis, ever since your mom died, I didn't think I'd ever find another woman that I could feel this way about. But Kim is different. I really like her. And I think that we might actually get married someday. If everything keeps as good as it has been. I get it. You miss your mom, and I do too. But I've got to move on. I'm not asking you to like Kim, just because I do. I just want you to give her a chance. Please. For me. This makes Travis feel a little guilty. He hadn't really gotten to know her all that well. But Kim really freaked him out. She was very tall very skinny woman that kind of reminded him of Momo. She had long black hair and a huge pair of eyes that looked like they could pop out of her head if she tried. Her face was constantly covered in heavy amounts of makeup, and she drenched herself in strong perfume, 
to the point that he could literally smell her coming. To her credit, the few times that Travis had actually met Kim in person, she was actually very sweet and friendly to him, but her appearance made him extremely uncomfortable. Rolling his eyes, arms still crossed, Travis replies, Fine. Not too much later, a black car pulls into the driveway and a tall figure wearing a long fur coat steps out. As she comes to the door and rings the bell, Travis is immediately hit in the face with the strong smell of her perfume. Well, he coughs. It's definitely her. Be nice, replies Trevor in a stern voice. Trevor opens the door, and Travis can't help but shudder as he sees the image of this alien-looking person standing in the doorway, her huge eyes staring gleefully at his father, and then quickly to him. Hey, bud! Kim squeaks in a high-pitched voice. Are you having a fun night? Her smile is stretched wide, showing off her way too white teeth. Oh, yeah, answers Travis, unenthusiastically. Super fun. For a second, it kind of looks to Travis that her left eye twitches just the tiniest bit after he says that. Travis swallows hard. Trevor invites Kim inside, and she gives him a huge, extended kiss. Travis has to keep himself from gagging at the sight of his father making out with this strange-looking woman. Eventually, Trevor leaves for his trip, meaning that Travis was now alone with Kim, and his dread began to rise quickly. At first, things are relatively uneventful. Travis stays in his room playing video games, and Kim sits in the living room watching TV, periodically checking Facebook on her phone. Eventually, it was time for dinner, which, to Travis's delight, Kim just ordered a large pizza. They sat at the dinner table, and Travis was shocked at just how much pizza Kim had eaten. He often wondered if she ate at all, but she easily put away half the pizza within ten minutes. Travis wanted to ask her how she could eat so much and be so skinny, but he was afraid to offend her again. Hey, Kim? He starts. Yeah, bud. She replies, chewing on the latest slice of pizza she'd started on. I was just wondering, um, how it is that, uh, well... You want to know why I'm so skinny, right? Travis nearly chokes on his own slice. Uh, yeah, actually. Well, I have an extremely high metabolism, which means that my body burns calories a lot faster than other people. I actually eat quite a lot, believe it or not. But no matter how much I eat, my body just stays the way it is. Oh, okay. Travis feels really bad now. He feels like an ass for thinking she looked scary because of how skinny she was, and it wasn't even anything she could control. Sorry. Don't worry about it, bud. She says, finishing the last of her meal. I know I look funny, but it is what it is. As the night progressed, Kim and Travis actually started to bond pretty quickly. They played video games together, and then watched a scary movie. Eventually, it was bedtime, and after brushing his teeth, Kim bid him goodnight and he crawled into his bed. After about half an hour, he realizes that he needs to pee and makes his way to the bathroom. After he does his business, he notices that Dad's bedroom light is on. Realizing that it must be Kim... An idea comes to him. Now, oh, Travis is a twelve-year-old boy, and dirty thoughts as well as genuine curiosity began to come to him. He wonders if she's changing, or maybe even just completely naked. Maybe he could get a quick peek. He'd never seen a real naked lady in real life before, and he especially wondered what Kim looked like without clothes on. Sneaking close to the door, he slowly turns the knob, it's not locked, to his relief. Even slower, he opens the door a crack, just enough to peek inside. What he sees is not what he was expecting. Kim was standing in front of his mum's old vanity, but something was very wrong. Sitting on the table was what at first looked to be a mask, but soon became clear to be something sinister. It was Kim's face. Not just the face, 
It was basically her entire head minus the skull. Slowly and shakily, Travis turns his attention to Kim's head, which was literally a pale white skull. Travis didn't even care that she stood there completely nude like he'd hoped. He was too transfixed on the freaking skull with two large eyes. Travis then watches as she begins to remove her skin as though she were taking off one-piece pyjamas. She reaches inside of it and pulls out what appears to be a large sack. She takes it to the small private bathroom, and Travis can hear her dumping something into the toilet and then flush it. She comes back, folds the skin and places it in a large black box that was laying on the floor next to the video. Finally, she pops out her left eye and places it in a small bowl of water on the table. And then she does the same with the right eye. She turns off the light and then slowly shambles her way over to Trevor's bed. Travis slowly closes the door and silently freaks out. Not knowing what to do, he slowly walks back to his room and climbs into bed. He does not sleep this night. The next morning, Kim gets Travis out of bed for breakfast. They sit at the table, eating the scrambled eggs that Kim had prepared before getting him up. No words are spoken at first, until Kim breaks the silence. I know you saw me last night, she says flatly. I don't, um, I don't know what you're talking about, responds Travis, refusing to look at her. Stop, she says sternly freezing Travis in place. Just stop. I know you saw my face. My real face. I know you watched me. I thought it was my imagination until this morning. You're acting like you've seen a monster. And I need you to understand. You are a monster! Travis yells, cutting her off, immediately regretting that decision. Kim's face becomes sad. Look, bud, there's things in this world that you wouldn't understand. Yes, there are monsters in the world. Real monsters that would have killed you in your bag the second they suspected you saw them in their true form. But I didn't, because I'm not a monster. <sighs> Am I human? No, not really. Do I mean you harm? No, I don't, but you need to understand that Beings like me are not understood by regular people, so my existence has to stay between us. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to scare you. But I will protect myself, and others like me. Terrified yet understanding at the same time, Travis agrees to not speak of what he saw, to anyone, ever. Later that day, Trevor returns, and Travis nearly knocks him over as he runs over and hugs him. Wow, bud. Trevor laughs. I've missed you too. Did you two get along? Travis looks over to Kim, who stares at him with a somewhat worried look on her face. Yeah. He answers, genuinely smiling. She's actually pretty cool. We had pizza, played some games, and watched movies. I like her a lot. He looks over to Kim, who is smiling brightly. Kim gives Trevor a big kiss and gives Travis an even bigger hug. Thank you, she whispers in his ear. Travis whispers back. You can trust me. I am trusting you too. And with that, Kim leaves, and Travis waves goodbye. With a newfound respect for Kim and new questions about what else is out there, he walks over to his dad to ask how his trip was. If you like this, please hit the little button to let me know. If you didn't, hit the little button to let me know. Leave a comment. I'm always glad to talk with you, my darlings. I'm open to suggestions and criticisms, critiques. If you have not subscribed, please do so and ring the little bell so you know when to come up and see me. And I will talk to you next time, my darlings. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs>